Okay, we're continuing our discussion of the real zeros of polynomial functions in this section. Let me re review what we talked about in 3.1. This is really a, a central idea here, the relationship among all these things. If you're talking about the real zeros of a polynomial function, uh, remember that's the value of x that makes the polynomial function equal zero. Um, it's, a, it's a solution to p of x equals zero. It'll also be a factor. Now, it's only if it's a real zero will it be an x-intercept, right? If you have a non-real zero, it, it, it will not correspond to an x-intercept. Anyway, so this is kind of where we're going with this. Um, the idea is if you know the zeros, you know the factors, it helps you graph as long as it's a real, real zero, but factoring poly, polynomials into, into factors is really where, where we're going here. And I want you to understand that there's really, I like to think of it as two main types of zeros, real and non-real non zeros. The real zeros can either be rational, this would be a rational zero, right? This factor gives you a rational zero of what, um, three halves, right? This uh, x squared minus three, if you factor that, you can actually factor it into x plus square root of three times x minus square root of three those would be ir irrational zeros, right? You have an irrational zero plus or minus square root of three. When you factor this, this is a, ir ir we call this an irreducible quad quadratic. If you, when you factor it though, you would get some non-real zeros. So there's different types of zeros here. In this section, we're gonna talk about what's called the rational zeros theorem. It only helps you find the rational ones. It doesn't help you with the irrational or the non-real zeros. It's kind of, it's not hard to show why it works. We'll do it in class. I don't have time here, but it says if you have a polynomial function and, and, and the, the coefficients are integer co coefficients, then if you have any rational zero, it has to be of the form p over q. p will always be a, a factor of this last term, and q will always be a factor of the leading coefficient. Get it? The numerator will be a factor of this last term, and the denominator q will be a factor of this leading coefficient. So for example, I'll give you a polynomial function like this and ask you to find the possible zeros. The possible zeros, the possible p's over q's, uh, the possible factors of this over the possible factors of that, uh, the plus or minus, let's just keep in front. So you get, you could have three over one, you could have three over two, you could have one over two, and you, of course you could have one over one. Don't, don't forget about that. Now, how do you figure out which ones are the actual zeros? Well, one way to do it would be to use long division or synthetic division. Another way to do it, though, if you think about it, you could um, you could just compute some function values, right? If you can, that's what I'm going to do here. If you enter the polynomial function, let's see, can you see this? You enter the polynomial function here. If you go second and then table, you may have some stuff in there. You can always just hit the delete button. And, Anyway, so you could just test this. Um, plug in 3 for x. Is that a 0? No. The function there is 24. How about negative 3? Nope. How about 1.5? Oh, got one. Uh, 3 halves is, a, is 0. So x minus 3 halves would be a factor, right? How about negative 1.5? Nope. How about 1 half? 0.5? Nope. How about negative 0.5? Nope. How about 1? Oh, got another one. I got two so far. How about uh, negative 1? There you go. I got three of them. So we've talked about this before. I, I found all of them, right? If it's a polynomial degree 3, then um, I found all the zeros. They turn out they're all rational. They don't all have to be rational, but in this case, they were all three rash rational. So the question is, um, when you find them, you get uh, x equal plus or minus 1 and you get, um, I'm just going to back off here a little bit, there. You get x equal plus or minus 1 and x equal 3 halves. Are there any non-rational non zeros? No, they're not non-rational, because only three, we, they're all rational. And But you remember, we, we, what, what we talked about was, when you know the zeros, you can actually factor it like this. If you look at the graph, it makes sense because you have three x inter intercepts, three real zeros. Let's um, ask the same question with, with this one, see if you can... Um, Enter this, enter this, well first let, let, let's find the possible rational zeros. Remember, the p's over q's, p has to be a factor of 2, q has to be a factor of 2 also. Oh, that's nice, there aren't too many to, to, to really have to worry about. So, so see if you can hit the pause button and, and you use your graphing cal calculator. Enter this function into y1, 
then use the table feature to plug these values in and see if you can find the the possible or see if you can find the actual rational zeros okay when I did that I entered this function to y1 then I used the table feature I got this I found that there's a rational zero at uh, one half that's the only one so so there's two more zeros that aren't rational now what what are they they could either be irrational or they could be non non real remember those are the only three three cases so you get x equal one half now how do you that's a good good question would be how do you de determine how do you find the other zeros let's find them so well if you use long division in this case I'm going to use synthetic division if you use synthetic division on one half by the way your re your remainder better be zero or else you made a mistake right these are the coefficients of the quadratic quotient. So when, 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 when you solve that, I use a little bit of work over here. I, I'll let you think about that. Use the quadratic formula on this. You may have to hit the pause button here. I get negative one plus or minus square root of three. Those are the irrational solutions. Irrational zeros. Got it? One rational, two irrational zeros. The graph looks kind of like this. Notice it corresponds to three x-intercepts. One of them is a rational, right? right there and two of them are irrational alright let's, let's do another one try, try this one same same thing see if you can uh, enter this on your calculator tell me the possible rational zeros and then also why don't you find all the rational zeros using the table feature okay when I did this I my possible zeros are plus or minus three and plus or minus one and then when I entered this function to y1 and looked at the table feature, I noticed there's a there's a rational zero at three. So there's two that are either irrational zeros or non-real. Okay. So anyway, how do you find it? Well, what you would do is again, if you use synthetic division, you divide, you take the coefficients of the of the polynomial and divide by um, x minus three. So you put a three here. Your remainder is zero, which it should be, but the coefficients of the quotient are x squared plus x plus one. When I use the quadratic form on this, I get uh, two non-real zeros, and that makes sense if you think about it. Uh, look, look at the graph. There's only one x inter intercept, so the non-real uh, zeros do not um, translate into x intercepts, do they? All right, I think we got time for one more here. Try this one. Okay, when I did this one, uh, there's a lot of possibilities, aren't there? The, the possible factors of 16 over 1, so you get all these guys. Uh, when I used the table feature, I found there were only two, zero, two rational zeros, uh, 2 and negative 2. Now, again, the question is, well, there's, um, there's some more zeros there. Uh, they're not going to be rational. They could, they could either be irrational or non-real. So how do you find that? Well, what I'd probably do is divide. Now this is a case where you cannot use synthetic division by the way. Do you understand why? It's because when you divide by, I guess you could do it twice, but if you're going to divide by x minus 2 times x plus 2, x minus 2 times x plus 2, which is x squared minus 4, synthetic division only works when you have um, linear factors. So when, anyway, when I use long division, it goes unevenly, which is better, right? And then this is my, my um, uh, quotient x squared plus 2x plus 4. When I use the quadratic formula on that I get two uh, non-real solutions. So what's going on here? This polynomial function has two real zeros. There are actually two rational zeros and two non-real zeros. Got it? Anyway, I just want to mention this last thing. Uh, I'm, I don't usually talk much about Descartes rule of sign. Uh, your, your teacher might if you're in a different class. And the upper and lower bounds theorem. Those are, those are in section 3.3 but I don't really talk about it much. But you might want to read that for your other class. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.